Hi, my name is Jasmine and I will be talking about how I got in the 96th percentile on the PCAT. So I took the PCAT July 12th of 2019. Um, I took it early because I knew I wanted to apply early. I didn't want to apply early admission, which means you just apply to one school. I wanted to apply to a lot of schools, but I just wanted to apply early. So I submitted my application in, I think, September. So I started studying for the PCAT in May. Um, at this point, I had already taken the general classes like biology, chemistry, orgo, calculus, um, math classes, those type of things. So I had a general knowledge base. Um, now, I would say if you don't already have that, like if you're still waiting to take those classes, I would say give yourself more time to study those concepts and subjects, um, maybe even half a year. I wouldn't recommend studying like a month before the exam especially if you haven't taken those classes like seven hours a day, just because you're not gonna get good general knowledge base. So yeah, I started studying in May, which gave me three months. Now, the first thing I did was I established a goal for myself. I knew that I wanted to get in the 70th percentile or around there. Um, I Googled the schools that I wanted to go to and their average scores for the PCAT for the students that matriculated the year before. And the majority of the schools were around like 60th or 70th percentile. And based on my GPA, which at the time was a 3.5, my volunteer experience, which was pretty good, but I just didn't have any pharmacy experience. So I knew that I needed to excel in the PCAT just to make sure that I was, you know, where I wanted to be. The second thing I did was I bought um, Kaplan test prep. So in hindsight, I would have done more research and bought a different book, but I bought the Kaplan books just because my boyfriend was taking the um, the MCAT at the time and was taking or, and was using the Kaplan test prep books for the MCAT. So I just bought the Kaplan books for the PCAT. Now I got one free practice exam from that book, and I also bought two Kaplan uh, practice exams and all of the Pearson practice exams with the writing prompts. With the Kaplan book. It just didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't sufficient for me, I feel like. Like, it didn't go over all of the concepts that it needed to know. And I just think it was lacking in a lot of things. Um, a lot of people love Dr. Collins' books and rave about them. So, I would say if you're going to buy a test prep book, buy those. Now, honestly, I really didn't need test prep books. I could find everything online. I mean, everything's online nowadays. Like, you can watch a thousand videos about different concepts that might help you more than a test prep book, I feel like, and for free. So like I said, I bought the Kaplan books and the third thing I did was, use my calendar, I'm a calendar girl. <laughs> so I wrote down all of the exams that I wanted to take, like the days I wanted to take them and I spaced them out about two weeks apart. And so I would take my exam on Monday and um, I would tell all my friends and family, you know, don't contact me on Monday because I'm going to be taking this exam and I want to be attentive. I don't want my phone around me at all. So I would take my exams on Monday and I would give myself two weeks to really go over every question that I missed and review the concepts that I needed to review. So like I said, I bought the Kaplan um, book, which came with one free practice exam. And before I did anything. I took my first practice exam before I even studied. And I thought, you know, it'll give me a good idea of where I'm at. And I thought I would do pretty good on it considering I already had knowledge of the questions and the subjects. Um, but yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I got in the 40th percentile, which it's not bad, but it just wasn't where I wanted to be. And I was really bummed and yeah, I was really hard on myself because I was like, there's no way I'm going to get in the 70th percentile in three months. There's no way. I would have to study like eight hours a day. And that's just not something I was willing to do. You know, I had my life. I had, you know, my friends that I wanted to see every day. And it was summer, so I wanted to go to the beach and things like that. I didn't want to study eight hours a day in a library for my last summer. That's just not what I wanted to do. And that's okay. So I thought maybe I should push my PCAT date back until like August or September. That'll give me the whole summer to study. 
and but I did it. I just ended up just pushing through and sticking to my goal. Now, so after I took that exam, I developed a way to study the best way that I think I could. And this helped me so much. So I will give you the resources. There's three of them. And I'll give you how I set up my time and use my time efficiently. So the concepts that I really needed help on were chemistry and math. Those might be different for you depending on your strengths and weaknesses. Um, I just found that I was very, I was not good at math. <laughs> Let's just say that. I was not good at math. Um, I hadn't taken a math class in like four years, like since high school pretty much. So yeah, I really needed to relearn math, especially derivatives. I had to basically relearn calculus. Um, and I also didn't do too well in chemistry. I love organic chemistry. I'm weird. I know. <laughs> but yeah, I was not good at gen chem. I think I got a C in my first gen chem class, which yeah, not too good. But I need I needed to refresh on chemistry concepts and math. And the Kaplan um, practice exams made me realize that. Um, so yeah, I studied chemistry and math mainly. I took like probably 10 or 15 biology classes. I'm a biomed major, so they require a lot of biology classes. And I also read pretty much every day. Like I said, I'm weird. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I was pretty good at the reading section. So chemistry and math, what I needed to focus on. So what I would do is I would go through every question that I missed and the concepts and see what I really needed to focus on. And then I would go to pharmacyschoolhq.com and look at their study guides. So their study guides are comprised of like 48 questions um, with different sections. And once you look at it, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, so I would go through every single question and make sure I was, I knew the concept. And let's say, for example, I didn't know about Lewis structure. I would go to Khan Academy videos and watch about Lewis structure until I was comfortable with the concept. Now, after I watched those Khan Academy videos, I would go to varsitytutors.com. I don't think a lot of people know about this um, website or resource. It's kind of hard to use, but what I would do is I would, for instance, I would type in varsity tutors. Sorry, I'm typing it in right now just to make sure. Dot com, so, and then I would also say Lewis structure in the Google search bar. And it would come up with like Lewis dot structures MCAT physical. And I would just use that and go through all those questions. Even though they're not PCAT questions, they're pretty similar to what you would find on the PCAT. It's just general knowledge about Lewis structure. And it has like, let's see. It has a lot of pages about, you know, questions that it might ask. So I would go through all those questions and really test my knowledge and practice, practice, practice. That is the main thing I would say you need to do if you're studying for the PCAT. Just go through a lot of practice questions until you're comfortable answering them. Because you can read the prep book all day, every day, but if you can't test yourself and get the right answer, then it's no help for the PCAT, no help. Um, so yeah, I would go through that. So I'm just gonna go over it again. I would go through every question that I missed on my practice exam and I would look at the concept. Then I would go to Pharmacy School HQ, their study guide, and go through the questions and the concepts that I needed help on. After that, I would go to Khan Academy videos, watch the videos, and really get a good understanding about background knowledge about the concept. And then I would go to Varsity Tutors and I would go through a million billion practice questions. And this helped me so much. It might seem like a lot of work, but the more work you put into it and the more you're efficient about it, the better you're gonna do. Now, I only studied maybe like two hours a day. It was summertime. I wanted to go to the beach. I wanted to hang out with my friends. I wanted to go outside and like have fun. So I 
arrange my time accordingly to where I can study for two or three hours a day and then the rest of the day I had to myself. Um, and this was really great for me. I enjoyed my summer. I studied for the PCAT. I did pretty well on the PCAT and it was just great. So yeah, that is the main thing I would do. Now, I want to make sure I include this in this video. Like I said, I didn't do too well on my first practice exam. And the main reason why I didn't do too well is because I did not know how to time myself. You have 48 questions on each section and you have 40 minutes to answer them. That gives you with less than a minute per question. Now you might freak out. You might think, I can't even read the question in less than a minute. How am I gonna go through this practice exam or this real exam in the amount of time that I have? And yeah, that's true. There's not a lot of time to read it and answer quickly. So what I did my, for my first practice exam was I thoroughly read every question and I thought really hard about every question and I psyched myself out and I didn't complete the questions in the allotted time. So I would have like 15 question, questions that I missed and that I could have answered right on if I had just skipped the questions that I didn't know and went to the easier questions. So yeah, that's the main thing about timing. You want to go through all the questions, mark what you think might be right, even if it, you're not sure, flag the questions that you wanna go back on and move on. Don't even think about it until you're at the last question and you're done and you have maybe five more minutes left and go through those flagged questions. I swear this will help you improve your score so much. So yeah, timing is a huge thing. It's not about just what you know. It's about how efficiently you can get through things in a timely manner. So yeah, 48 questions in 40 minutes. Now, you have eight questions that are purely experimental. So what this means is they just insert a question that they're not going to, you know, deduce your score or reduce your score, I mean, and um, you're not it's not counted against you, but you won't know what those questions are. So let's say you're going through biology section um, and you find a question that's like insanely hard and you're like, how would anyone know this? Just mark what you think is right and skip it. It might be experimental for all you know. It might not count against you. Just move on and go back to the question when you're done. So yeah, we went through establishing a goal putting down all your calendar dates, test prep books, resources that I used, and timing. Those are the main things that I want you to focus on. Now with, I wanna talk about writing. So I took the Pearson writing prompts and I got like a three on every single one. There was nothing I could do to improve. And honestly, I don't think schools look at it that heavily. It's not included in your um, final composite score. So yeah, if you don't do too well on writing, don't worry about it. Just move on to things that really matter. So yeah, I'm trying to think of things that I missed. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, please reach out. I would love to help. Um, so yeah, you can find me on Facebook or you can even comment down below or send me an email. I would love to help you. Um, yeah, don't stress about it. Do your best study but don't don't get down on yourself if you don't do as well as you want to you can always take the pcat again it's not a big deal um yeah exercise breathe drink water do all the things that you need to do for self-help before you you study for the pcat i swear you can you can study all day long but if you're not taking care of yourself then you're not going to get anywhere and that's just the truth so yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.